Hello everyone, Sunday morning on Exmoor, the weather not looking too great. Um, I'm a week away from the first race at uh, Gravity LC, cannot wait to do that, cannot wait to meet all the guys down there. But if you are racing any type of quad bike, of course you're going to need a kill switch. And what I was finding with this Polaris Sportsman that I have, which I'm going to be racing, is finding a suitable kill switch for it was proving quite difficult. There are two types of kill switch. One shuts your circuit when you pull it, and the other pulls the circuit open, so breaks the circuit when you pull it. And what we needed was a kill switch that broke a circuit. It is known as Type 2 at some uh, retail outlets. But finding one of those in the sort of time that I had to fit one was proving now on impossible. I think I found one in Ireland and it wasn't going to get here in time to book in, etc. So anyway, I thought a bit laterally and I've come up with this solution, which I hope is going to help most Polaris owners. This is a 570. It's an 18... 2018 model i think the model was introduced in 2017 and is continuing for the foreseeable future so 2019 models are the same but i got the tips off a website which did a kill switch a similar installation on a scrambler polaris scrambler so we assume and i can't really tell you whether this is factually correct or not that most wiring looms for the Polaris in this era are going to be around the same. So let me show you what you need to achieve and what you need to do in order to fit a kill switch that's going to break the circuit to a Polaris Sportsman. So in case you're unfamiliar what a kill switch looks like, it is basically, as the name suggests, a switch. Now this is a Type A. This actually connects a circuit. We want to break the circuit and it was bought by me in error, but I just thought I'd show you what it looks like. You're going to need one of these to start with. Type A, Type B, whichever one you need. If you've got a Type B, it's probably easier just to wire it in. But if you have bought a Type A in error and like me, don't have enough time to sort it out, this is what you need to do. You need to cannibalize this for the parts. You're going to need this tether here you're going to need this plastic unit here or this plastic unit ignore this one has a switch on some of them don't to get that apart take these four screws and nuts out and you can also lose if yours is fitted with an additional switch you can lose that as well but you need to take the switch out of here and you need to retain the wiring loom as well so all the shrouded plastic and the two wires again these come in different colors so it doesn't particularly matter what colors yours are Take it all apart, cut the switch off at the end, you're going to be left with the wiring loom and the actual plastic unit itself and the tether. You can get rid of the little red switch on the end because that basically depresses the switch inside and closes the circuit up. We want to do the opposite. You're also going to need some spade connectors, both the male and the female type of spade connectors there. They come in various sizes for ease and because you're going to be pulling something out, I would go as big as you can. You can also fit a switch there. That's my next natural step on the bike. You're also going to need your soldering iron and your soldering gear, etc. And a few pairs of pliers and some electrical tape come in useful. Moving on to the bike, you need to take off the front shrouding surrounding the big spotlight on the front if you've got one and also remove the, the spotlight, the headlight, whatever you want to call it itself which simply come off with those two bands there which I've taped up just to keep them safe and there is also a screw around there, the adjusting screw for the headlight. Now the wiring loom itself, it looks a bit daunting, it's covered in this plastic type material here all you need to do is to remove that don't cut it off it actually comes off it's got a natural cut in it which allows you to move it quite safely and what you're looking to do is remove it around the back of the ignition key so that plug there that white plug with the five wires coming off it is your ignition key so if we went round to the front of the back you'll see where that is that's there and what you need to do is look for, there is a wire there, believe it or not, which is a red and black one. It's very hard to tell on this shot. And because I've spliced it, it's even more difficult to find. But if I just take everything off there, you see that red wire there? It has got a black stripe running it through it. I find mine is a slightly pinky colour as well, so it's not sort of a pure red. 
Um, but that's the way you want to cut. What you've got to consider is this is your ignition system, so it's your lights, etc. If you do happen to cut the wrong wire, yes, it's going to be a pain. It's not the end of the world. Just splice the two ends together. You're only going to sort of knock out your headlights, etc. It's not going to sort of mess up the whole system, but still important to cut the right wire. Cut it away from the system. I've told them to cut it sort of 10, 15 centimetres away from the system just to give me enough working room. And once you've done that, take your kill switch wire and solder on the wire, so these two wires, to the two halves, so one to each half of the cut red and black wire. That's all you need to do. Once you've done that, take the other end of the kill switch and solder on. And when I say solder on, because these are obviously crimp connectors, what I'd like to do is remove the blue cover on there, open up the end of that, because it's quite a tight connection, put a little bit of solder in, tint the end of my connectors and then solder it on and then close it all up with a bit of heat shrink I just find that easier yes you can uh, crimp them on but at the end of the day you're going to be pulling these quite hard if you're going to be falling off a bike and you don't want them to come out I find them slightly unreliable so I like to just to solder for extra insurance so you'll be moving up here to the sort of business end of the bike this end of the bike of course is where the kill switch is going to come out and you can see my installed one yesterday what I have done is used the black covering that came with the original kill switch and fed one freshly connected wire through there with the female plug on it and cable tied the other one to the side depending how big the opening is there you may be able to fit two through you may not so I'm just trying to get those into focus now for you Finding it a bit difficult with everything in the background, I'm sure you can see that. You then need to take another piece of wire, this can be any gauge wire. I think I've gone through a 12 AWG gauge wire there, which I found in an old box. And you need to solder onto each end of those the male spade connectors. Again, exactly the same method as you did with the female ones, it's your choice if you want to crimp them on or not. Again, just for insurance. I like to solder and a little bit of heat shrink so they're not connecting, they're not touching anything that needs not to touch, we don't want to do. Onto that wire I tend to put one of these bungee cords which came with the original kill switch, the reason is it does the job, we know it does the job, it's also got one of these clips on which goes onto your body armour or your belt or wherever you're going to connect it to depending what type of driving you're doing or you can just let it hang free if you're just doing general field work and I just heat that up just to connect it a few cable ties just to neaten it all up and that's all you need to do reconnect your holder for the kill switch to the handlebars and with it in you should have the vehicle firing up as usual I'll just put the phone down just so I can fire her up so we've got it running and the nice thing is, because this is a dual connection, you've got a loop in your wire, so it completes the circuit. You can pull any one of these out, like so, and it shuts the bike down straight away. Once you pop it back in again, and you just see me connecting that there, fires the bike into life. Taking it off, blanks the screen off, you're breaking the circuit. And that is basically all you need to do, just to prove that works again. I'll fire it up again. There you go, the circuit's in place, the bike is running for between 1250 and 1350 idle as it should do. Thank you very much to Quad Bike Wales for supplying the uh, kill switch. Those guys, if you ring them up, absolutely brilliant. A lot of knowledge, a lot of products in stock for whatever brand of quad bike you had. Thank you to the sponsors that I have, uh, goodsign.co.uk, Brendan Manor Stables, uh, Dan at HWR, thanks for your support. We've also got hurdlesdriving.co.uk, M&R Williams Haulage and... Uh, you know a few more mill slade uh, b and b down there in brendan thank you guys for your support down there um the back will be getting logoed up at some point hopefully this week and uh, i will put uh, pictures on the facebook page of what it all looks like but for now thank you for watching hope this has proved useful remember this is a polaris sportsman 570 it does work across the polaris range we assume they have the same uh, wiring loom so whether you um, sort of tapping into a sportsman or a scrambler or, or whatever quad bike you have it should work fingers crossed but uh, thank you for watching bye bye for now